In this video we will review some basic trigonometric identities and how to use them to simplify expressions involving trigonometric functions. First, let's remember how the basic trigonometric functions sine and cosine can be used to obtain the other trigonometric functions. For example, cosecant is just the reciprocal of sine, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, tangent is sine over cosine and cotangent you can think of uh, usually is either the reciprocal of tangent or if you take the definition of tangent sine over cosine and take the reciprocal of that you can write cotangent as cosine over sine. Usually either of those approaches will get you closer to what you want. So let's see how we can use these properties to simplify an expression like tangent squared of x times cosine cubed of x. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is recall that tangent is the same as sine over cosine, and therefore tangent squared is the same as sine over cosine squared. And then I can distribute this exponent to the numerator and denominator in this fraction. So that'll give me sine of x squared divided by cosine of x squared times cosine cubed of x. And now we can simplify some more by observing that we can cancel this cosine squared in the denominator with two of the cosine factors in the second expression. If we think of the second expression as a fraction over 1, then we're seeing we're just canceling bet factors between numerator and denominator. We can cancel everything in the denominator, leaving 1 in the numerator. And so our answer is sine squared of x times cosine of x. Now this form looks very similar to what we started with up here, so why are we calling this simplified? Well, for one thing, notice that the exponents that we're dealing with are smaller here. Uh, we have exponents of 2 and 1 instead of 2 and 3. Uh, so typically we would recognize that as a simpler form of the expression. Let's look at another example, secant cubed of x divided by cosecant to the fourth of x. Again, I'm going to use those relationships from the earlier slide, reminding us how secant is the same as 1 over cosine. So this numerator is 1 over cosine quantity cubed. And this denominator, cosecant, is 1 over sine. And so we have that quantity raised to the fourth power. And then uh, instead of writing all this with parentheses, what I can start to do is distribute this exponent 3 to the numerator and denominator. So that's 1 cubed, which is just 1, over cosine of x cubed. And then I'm dividing by another fraction. Instead of dividing by a fraction, I'm going to multiply by its reciprocal. So I have a numerator of 1 to the 4, that's just 1, but after I take the reciprocal, it goes in the denominator. And I'll have sine of x raised to the 4th. That'll end up in the numerator. Now you can see what we're looking at is starting to bear resemblance to the tangent function. I've got sines in the numerator and cosines in the denominator. So let's match them up one for one. Um, I have sine to the fourth. That's sine times sine times sine times sine. What I'm going to do is just take three of those factors, pull them out, leaving one of the factors by itself. Because now I've matched sine and cosine I can rewrite this as sine of x over cosine of x quantity cubed. And then sine of x over 1, we'll just write as sine of x. Um, now sine of x over cosine of x, that's the same as tangent of x. And so I have tangent cubed times sine. 
And again, we'd call this a simplified form. Um, notice that exponents are smaller, 3 and 1 instead of 4 and 3. Uh, and also, I don't have a division bar, so that's one fewer symbol. Two reasons why we would tend to think of this final answer as a simplified form. Another important identity is the so-called Pythagorean identity. Uh, this comes from looking at triangles. If you have a right triangle and an interior angle theta, the opposite side of that triangle is uh, hypotenuse times the sine of the angle. The adjacent side is hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle. And then if you just use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, you come up with this identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So let's see how we can use that in a problem. I want to simplify the expression tangent squared of x plus 1 quantity times cosine cubed of x. So there are several ways to do this. And the first way we're going to look at is just to start by distributing to get rid of parentheses. So if I distribute this cosine of x to the sum inside these parentheses, I'll end up with tangent squared of x times cosine cubed of x plus 1 times cosine cubed of x. Again, tangent we can think of as sine over cosine. So this is sine of x over cosine of x quantity squared times cosine cubed of x plus cosine cubed of x. Sine over cosine squared is the same as sine squared over cosine squared. Now notice I can do some simplifying like we did earlier. I can cancel factors of cosine between the numerator and denominator here, leaving me with sine squared of x times cosine of x, because there were two in the denominator that canceled with the three in the numerator, leaving one in the numerator. Now, you might get to this point and think there's nothing more that you can do, but actually, there is something you can do. Notice that both terms here have a common factor of cosine. If we pull that out, it leaves sine squared of x from the first term and cosine squared of x in the second term. And this quantity is 1 by the Pythagorean identity. So I'm really looking at cosine of x times 1. So the, real, the simplified form is cosine of x, and that's definitely simplified compared to what we started with. Okay, I mentioned that there's more than one way to solve that problem, and another way is to use a related identity. So this one, tangent squared of x plus 1 equals secant squared of x, is very similar to the Pythagorean identity, uh, and actually it comes directly from the Pythagorean identity. If you start with sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 1. And then divide both sides of this equation by cosine squared of x. You can simplify the left side, break it up into two fractions, sine squared of x over cosine squared of x plus cosine squared of x over itself equals 1 over cosine squared. Well, 1 over cosine is secant, so the right side is really secant squared. And then on the left side, sine over cosine is tangent, so sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared. And of course, cosine squared divided by itself is 1. And so that's where we get this identity from. So you don't really have to memorize this additional identity. If you've already learned the Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, you can come up with this one by just dividing the Pythagorean identity by cosine squared.
Okay, now let's see how this makes the problem we were just working on even easier. Um, first of all, tangent squared x plus 1, according to the identity we just looked at, that's the same as secant squared. So this whole quantity is really secant squared x times cosine cubed of x. And then secant is 1 over cosine, so secant squared is 1 over cosine squared. And if we cancel factors again, these two cosines in the denominator cancel with two of the cosines in the numerator, leaving one in the numerator, leaving us with just cosine of x, which is the same result we got the other way.